Yeah. You're supposed to introduce everybody. I'm doing that. Oh. Shut up. Listen. <laughs> well, they're all talking back there. Hey, quiet on the set. Quiet on the set. Okay. You did talk I, too loud. Did I Scott. the mic? Oh, geez. Okay, oh, anyway. Somebody else talk too <laughs> Kids. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it's fucking terrible. Hey, Bo, you're better than they are tonight. <laughs> Anybody knows Bo knows that's a compliment. All right, honey. Anyway. At the end of the table, we got Jim and Judy. Beautiful Judy sitting next to him. Thank you, Betty. Jim and Judy, big gas jam show <laughs> extravaganza that's coming Duo. up. Duo. <laughs> and band and dot com. <laughs> <laughs> and who? Roberto Fujita Gonzalez Martinez. With? Un Reggie King Sears. It's Robert. In English. <laughs> Como se llama? Uh, yes, Como se llama yes. Bobby Mack. Okay, and uh, this is sponsored by Roadkill Custom Drum Company and Pizza Connection. If I had a box, I'd show you on the screen, you know, do a big thing. Where's Pizza uh, Connection? It, pizza Connection is in Auburndale, Florida, and it is the best pizza in Florida, in my opinion. Turn good. Which counts, because sure I'm is. a good cook. So, anyway, let's I get like, on. Let's like get on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on to it. We've been talking music, all kind of other shit tonight, so we're going to continue talking more shit. Um, Can I ask a question? Yes. We've talked about us a lot. How did the Roadkill Custom Drums get started? Oh, here we go. Now I'm on the spot. Um, go read my website. <laughs> Roadkill.com. It's easy way. It's like a, I did the bio there. I put all this work into it. And now it. i got to so remember how to repeat that. Well, here you go. When did you start playing drums? Was oh, it young? I, or? No, I started late. Um, I had health conditions. had to forced into retirement. And uh, working on bucket list items because I was told I was going to die. <laughs> Fooled their ass. And uh, one of my things was I wanted to play drums. always wanted to play. So, uh, you know, after playing air drums for 35 years I thought this shouldn't be too bad and I bought a drum kit and learned that it didn't transition that well so after that um, it sat in the garage for a couple years and I was just too damn hot out there so I didn't play it and then finally let my wife let me bring the kid in time. <laughs> uh, her bit, <laughs> right, Connie? A very big mistake because it turned into just a few years later. Now we have a drum company. I've got at least so, 12 kits me for sale right that now. That she let in you inventory. put the drums in the living room? Yes. I have other friends that have them in the kitchen. Uh, some are in the dining Yours room. Yours are in the living room. <laughs> yeah, mine's in the living room too. <laughs> Steve Ditus's was in the kitchen. <laughs> it had the most room. Yeah. So anyway. So how did you get into the development of the customizing part? Because a lot of your drums are pretty unique and really they're really good job. You do a good job at it. Yes. It's well, it's it's kind of what Connie and myself are into. You know, it's like we've downsized. We've tried to create a smaller footprint. Um. You know, so we don't create garbage. When I buy drums, it's like I buy them to rescue them basically from going in the junk or, you know, try to restore them. I look for good stuff too, don't get me wrong, but it's, you know, I look for the best stuff I can get, the best price. If I can't turn it into a good drum, then it goes into furniture or other ideas from, you know, I've, got, I've made purses out of drums. Lazy Susan's mirrors, um, end tables, coffee tables with hydraulic lids. The hydraulic lift coffee yeah. table is um, incredible. So if you ever Which go to Je awesome. so if you ever go to Jesse's in Winter Haven, lift up on the lid on that coffee table out front. And, yeah, and uh, I gave that to them for their twentieth anniversary, 
and uh, you guys were there for that one mm-hmm. too. And it was, you know, it's keeping music yeah. around. Yeah. I have to say, I do. I know <laughs> you, you bring Connie's name into this a lot. I know. We Is need she to bring the brains her in behind here. the? Uh, um, I see she does artwork. She's into. She's all kind of. Uh, I think he's some cool stuff. Not know, saying, this is I'm cool. not taking anything away from you, but does she say, you need, you need to try this, and you need to try that. And she How long have you been married? <laughs> All time. <laughs> we're, we're, All time. We're, on, we're on 30, so. So we're on 44. Uh, you've been told plenty Ching-ching. of times. Happy uh, wife, happy yeah. life. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, why I, that's why I started cooking. Of oh, 43? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see, I'm losing count. So, yeah, I'm speaking of that. That's why we, this is why this is all started because we started doing a uh, roadkill dinner jam. And the reason I did that, and I'm going to back up even farther than that for a second. When I started playing in the house and actually practicing, um, I'm going to do, no, I'm not going to do a shout out yet (laughs) until I get paid for it. But, uh, (laughs) (laughs) damn right. Yeah, so um, I, I was learning how to play, but mostly by ear, you know, just just playing. So I put the time in, was getting better, and then finally, you know, started going to the first open mic I went to was Jim and Judy's Big Ass Jam. And, you know, sat there like a scared little kid. I wasn't about to get up there and play, you know, just want to check it out and meet people. And I think the second time I went... Judy was like, well, come on up and play. And I'm like, uh, you know, scared to damn death. But I did it and. Had a good time. I had a great time. I ain't going to say I did a really good job. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I had <laughs> but fun. I, but I had fun. And that really inspired me to just keep going. And. Uh, now I feel a lot more comfortable playing. I'll jump up with about anybody and play just as bad as I did the first time with them. <laughs> <laughs> At least I've, you know, I enjoy doing it. But, you know, and then that, that, that spun around into, uh, I, I, you know, I didn't want to be in a band really. You know, I like making drums. I like doing stuff like that, but I'm, like spending time with Connie, so I don't like to commit all my nights and weekends to playing in a band. And uh, that's uh, where was I going with that? <laughs> I so that's to, why I you started Road Kill Drums. <laughs> this is how you. Roadkill this drums. is where you started. No, that's where I, dinner jams. That's where I was going with it. So I started doing the dinner jams. Um, and what is a gin? What is a dinner jam? A dinner jam. A dinner jam. What is a dinner jam? Well, a dinner jam. Dinner jam. Has anybody met Trudy yet? (laughs) (laughs) This is her. Her alter ego is Trudy. We started doing the (laughs) the dinner (laughs) jam. It's Trudy and Jim. (laughs) Trudy and Jim. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, here we go. Okay, stop. Okay, here we go. (laughs) Breathe. Okay, we did the Jenner Dam <laughs> about a year ago. We started doing this. I know I'm going with it, but uh, it was it was really fun. I started doing it really for selfish reasons. I really wanted to play live music without rehearsal with various artists and good players, you know, and the only way to really get them here <laughs> was to, to feed, feed them. them a gourmet meal, you know, <laughs> make them a while. So yeah, that's what it did. It was, it, it turned out really great. I've had uh, a bunch of good people so far and I can't wait to get more of them on the podcast. Um, this is the first one. So excuse our ignorance and, uh, it's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. But after, Meeting more musicians and uh, getting our wonderful son-in-law and daughter, um, with Laurel and Jane. It's uh, we started recording them um, just to start building a brand and a company, and uh, did some videos of our dinner jams, and they've kind of taken off and allowed us to get produced very well, bigger, mm-hmm. bigger, yeah, produced really excellently, well done. really well done. And has allowed us to get some bigger names in. And, you know, I kind of joke around like us, you know, wanting to do something like the Sugar Shack Sessions and 
because I followed them for a long time and saw how they did something similar and it kind of blew into something huge. So if you like reggae, Sugar Shack, mm-hmm. you know, look it up. I love Daryl's um, house. Oh, yeah. I love Dar- <laughs> and, and that was the other one. Was yeah. like Daryl's house, live at Daryl's. And mm-hmm. it's just, you know, a good meal, get good musicians come in and play that have never played before. Yeah. And sometimes it's, okay it's never been bad sometimes it's just okay sometimes it's been magic you know you get into a groove with somebody and it's just where'd this come from you know i think i think it's i think it all comes from the heart i mean if your your love for music Mm -hmm. and your eagerness to keep things moving along we've kind of we did the jam for the same reason you do this for the same reason you love music you love musicians you love to stay in the thick of it and what you brought to the community with your dinner jams and your podcast is something that's never really been done around here Not and around you here. have yeah. and you have had a lot of good musicians show up and that's and you do this not for the money you do it because you love the music and you love the art and i think that's a um, that's and he loves to cook and he loves to cook <laughs> yeah, like we to cook. like to eat it yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we like to and that's the only way I can get really good musicians. Nah, to come nah, nah, nah. <laughs> well, hell, hey, all you do is throw oh, a pizza on. or a hot dog. Oh, come on, right? <laughs> I'll take it with a hot dog. <laughs> they actually made hot dogs at the. We went to uh, uh, Adrian's, Adrian's for Super Bowl. For Super Bowl, and they said, "Jim, if you come out, we'll have hot dogs for you." Like, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for me? I looked Give up the counter. They had all these the green ones and the red ones. I'm like. What is all that audio? That's like, oh, this is squash something. I was like, no, give me the hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the hot dog. Sometimes it's the easiest things are the best. Just same with music. It's all about simple. Just Keep simple. simple. Keep it yeah. simple. Have fun with it. Push other people to be all they can be. Um, try not to. I kind of disagree because I kind of like the experimental part of it where it's like every time we have a session, it's with different people Mm -hmm. with different styles, different Mm -hmm. backgrounds, yes, different skill levels. You know, here I'm trying to play. Yeah, I've been playing. I can't say I'm a beginner anymore because it's, you know, going on 10 years (laughs) or eight years, I think. But, you know, I'm playing with, guys that have been playing like Robert my entire life (laughs) (laughs) or damn close to it close you know how long have you been playing (sighs) now Uh, he's gonna tell his age he's not old (laughs) 45 years nice very nice so you come a long way well I feel like <laughs> still when I was 19, I, like I was playing four to six hours a day and I was sweating in a room and just playing and playing with headphones on or big loudspeakers behind me. And I thought, you know, I was playing to Rush and Yes and Genesis and all the progressive nice. stuff and odd time signatures. I feel like my playing has gotten not, I'm not as good as I used to be, but I'm more versatile. I can play nice. more styles. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed, but, I, I've talked to a lot of musicians, and I notice a lot of the better musicians were the ones that locked themselves in a room, and actually, they weren't very good, and I I think, I guess I can say some names, David Breimer told me a story that he was a guy that, and he's played for some very professional, Jackson Brown, and and he locked himself in a room, so it kind of, and so did, uh, I know I'm jumping around a little bit, and so did um, Adrian uh, um, Mike Mike? Richards. Mike. Yeah. They locked themselves in and became what a bass music player. gurus. gurus yeah. mm-hmm. Mike and they, had, they kind of lost a little player. bit of social skills somewhere along the uh. way. There some of, <laughs> not all of them, but some of them because they were so <laughs> involved funny. in their music that they, it just it consumed <clears throat> them. Um, touching base on something that you mentioned earlier. You were talking about how they used to come in droves and now they're not and the gap between, like, you know, all us, there's a lot of us older guys that are still out there working and you're like where's this younger generation and finally I'm playing with a guy but he's 32 I was playing in bands when I was in my teens with 30 year mm-hmm. olds and I played all through that and I never saw a fresh you know infusion of youth and I find the break at where people were starting to say oh I don't play cover music 
I play original. I play my own stuff. I'm like, do you ever lock yourself in a room for four or six hours and try to cover something just so you could learn how to play something like those masters have? There's a lot yes. to be said with people that can cover stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, a good uh, guy that we know from this here, Carter, Carter uh, oh, yeah, yeah. McDonough. Yeah, yeah. He plays with a band that's a foreigner. What's the other band? Foreigner and uh, Journey. Uh, it's Journey. a Journey form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. Remember we seen him? And they cover yeah. that stuff on. Yeah. It's on. Yeah. It's just, it Something takes a lot of work that. to be a, a, a that good. When you're that good, I, I still think there's something that some people lose in their... Su you have to give a lot. That's a, you, play you music, sacrifice playing something you play exactly a lot the way of music, somebody else You did. give something of, of yourself that... Some people can give that and still retain their Crazy. personality. Some people yeah. get so deep into it that they kind of lose a little. What I've seen is they become they they lose. Uh, I don't know. Their own distinct fingerprints. Yes, they they lose themselves in their music. So when you talk to them, it's like all they know is music. Not not all, but a lot of them that are really deep. They're you know, I've said so. When you you said you locked yourself in a room, how was your growing up as a youth? Well, I didn't have much of that because I was in my room playing music. Now put them on a stage and they they shine. Take them off stage, they're actually like now what am I gonna do it myself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, takes all. Time. It's interesting. Well, that's the same story with some of the biggest names out there. You know, Freddie Mercury, same kind of person, same personality. Yes. Yeah. Just, yeah. Well, Reggie, I'd, I'd love to be one just of one, you know, yeah. just one example. Yeah, the guy that I play with, Reggie, is autistic. And he's very solemn and very, you know, he's very gracious when people come up to him. And he can handle handle it. But uh, he's very much to himself and very quiet and very shy. But then when he gets on stage, he yep. becomes a different person. Mm -hmm. It's like his inner creative artistic person just comes pouring out. to be. Yeah. Oh. And I've I don't I've never been told play less, <laughs> which is for a drummer is a dream. Mm -hmm. Oh, could you could you play it straight there? Could you play something simpler? He almost never said that, um, and he he never says it's too much, uh, and he colors. And I've never played each song the same twice ever ever. We always experiment. So it, being creative and playing his original music and him giving me the freedom to play whatever I want is. Been a talk, dream, dream come talk, true. Mm -hmm. Talking about drummers uh, and, <laughs> and playing every <laughs> song different. Every time I play the same song, with you guys will play it different. <laughs> yes. What's what's Absolutely. Danny's last name? Danny, the drummer, Danny. Um, Danny Dreadlocks. Um, <laughs> GQ he, model, Danny. Huh? Yeah, yeah. GQ he model. He plays Danny. with um, <laughs> with uh, uh, um, um, Come on, dude. Uh, Josh Blevins. Josh Blevins band. He is a rock player. He can play pretty much any kind of music. But Richards. And, Danny, Danny Richards. Richards. Danny Richards. Yeah. And he had come around and he plays country. Which Sorry, Danny. Kind of, <laughs> he, sometimes I think he gets bored because country music is, is, and don't let me, for a drummer, it's a challenge to stay simple. You know, simple. Yeah. Straight. Because they want to be turned loose. Vanilla. And Danny, I've seen Danny on both sides. I've seen him do both sides. And he's finally got to a spot where he's comfortable and they, and because um, they play a lot of the upper, upper, um, Registers of music where you get into the music, uh, and it kind of cuts them loose every once in a while. But right. then he has to be able to drop back and do the just the country beat. Keep going. And I look at him, I smile. And he's Keep like, going. you know, it's like it's a job, kind of like you know, right. because it is. Music is a job, and it's fun. I mean, and when you got a steady job every day, paying some of the bills, you can't say, "Well, I want to be a rock player." Well, if there ain't enough rock out there, and music is definitely. Um, in the eye of the beholder, because you in Polk County, you can be rock, you can be country, you can be, and mm -hmm. we haven't touched based on how the stage presence of a band promotes music. And I'm going to throw a, I don't want to get in any trouble, but I'm going to throw a name in here. Spank and Sadie Band is a very well-rounded, they're entertainers. They will come off the stage, all of them will come off the stage and they will play, and they'll come back up on stage and give them their heart and soul into their style. It, but it's entertainment is is They're right there. Having fun, right yeah. about up they there. They make you have fun. Yeah. That is because they're having me, fun. That is, and you watch them. They pack a house all the time. 
Oh yeah, um, especially Apple. And it's not Jeez, because they're better musicians. They're it's because I think they're better entertainers. So when my advice to anybody that plays is to try to be an entertainer while you're playing music. Um, you know, if you all go back to uh, bring something to the show. Some of the older bands were like Robin Trower. He wasn't much. He just played guitar, and everybody loved him. But then as you come forward with uh, people like uh, uh, Jeth- Jethro Tull, I'm going back. They, they jumped around stage and, and, and they entertained yeah. you while they played good music. Well, like e- even McKenzie, you know, uh, back at our local level. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like when he plays, he, he, you know, he closes his eyes, he rolls his head he is, back, he's into it. You know, mm-hmm. when he's playing a song, he's into guess. the song. Yeah. You know, and, and that enthusiasm really translates to the crowd because I've watched him play in a hundred venues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We met him when he was probably 16. Yeah. He wasn't even old enough to get into bars. Yeah, he was like 19. We've actually got videos of him back when he was that young and he, you could tell he always had it and I would look at him and I'd watch him play some music and say, you know, you didn't play the right chord but he sang the right chord so you, nobody knew and he looked at me back when he was 16 and said, Jim, it's all smoke and mirrors. And today, he's, of course, he's got way beyond that where he plays everything with a band and with everybody else. And he keeps saying it's smoke and mirrors, but I'm saying, that's not smoke and mirrors. You know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, he's very good at what he does. Natural. Yeah. yeah he, uh, uh, I'm definitely right. saying. You know, when you play that much, you're going to get yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah. Dara's another one, and we haven't mentioned some of the musicians, but Dara is a good musician. She oh, yeah. came from. She's a, coming up in the she, future. She She's come, been to a jam. She come from a girl that could. And I guess I'm allowed to say this because I've known them both for a long time. She come from a girl that was on a stage having a good time, singing, partying her brains out, sometimes falling off the stage, to a girl that's now able to hold her own, play guitar, sit on stage, and do it, and make a living. Been in major bands. She was one of the girls that could get up on a tabletop and sing and dance. You know, she had the entertainment part. Problem was, she, I think she fell off. I don't know if she fell off. Sorry, Dara. One too many times. <laughs> but fell she, off the table. One she too had, many she had, had, had some of this. Her, her entertainment, Says I would think, her entertainment <laughs> would come, come from uh, some of the alcohol would help her get up. And then as she transitioned, now you start to see her be able to take that, some of that entertainment with her without being. Is, is this Dara from Dara and yeah. the Detour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She's all, but, not, and now she's married, having kids. You, you gotta down. Re- it's like, well, yeah. It's, it's called growing up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You remember that, don't you? <laughs> yeah. You, mm. Have you ever grown up? I've gotten older. <laughs> <laughs> I keep getting older. I see. I see a bunch of people that are shaking their heads, saying no. <laughs> We don't down. grow up, we just get a little smarter, that's all. <laughs> Do we? <laughs> well, maybe. Don't ask the younger people, they think we get dumber. <laughs> well, I agree with it. All right. All right, we gotta so, go. It's uh, past my bedtime because I'm doing old jokes. <laughs> you know, it's almost 10. <laughs> wait, wait, it's 9.02. Okay, it's 9.02, <laughs> and I've got to go to I bed. A, so. I, have a, I have a request before you go. Can you give us a drum roll out? Can it be tweeted to you? Um, oh, on the table? <laughs> yeah. oh, give, no, give me the button. To... No button. Just do it. Ready? Here, it Here it is. Where is. Which one is it? I think it's this one. Oh, that's cheating. Awesome. We don't want a cheating one. We want you to do it for real. Just give oh, us a well, it did it on the no, head on the table. Can you do it? But it was Come it. Come on, help him out. <laughs> That's about right. Okay. We're we gonna do a big drum roll on I two, know. three, four. <laughs> hey guys, hey. I've done that. Inspiration. For all the drummers. <laughs> we hit. We hit. Hey! We hit. Awesome. Dead Good on. Time. Dead Thank on. Thank you, Rotel right. Drums and Pizza Connection. <laughs> that Get was that different. commercial shit in there. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to give a plug because I ain't got paid yet. Well, thanks, Jim.